It's the Daily Dispatch in discussion with Darren Mann. The specter of load shedding looms large over the South African economy. Yep, it's the economy that's suffering, not just domestic households that are struggling, but local business, small business in particular, being hit particularly hard. We hear evidence today from Untata businessman Dr. Andile Nonso. He's also on the OR Tambo District Business Chamber as well as on the KSD Business Chamber. Doctor, these are unhappy times. Tell us what you're struggling with. Uh, thank you very much. We're struggling in this area as everybody else in South Africa. It's worse with us because in terms of the employment in this area, we're more than 60% unemployment. We're one of the mostly poor, poorest of the poor districts. Load shedding is killing our main business, especially the tourism and the retail, including everybody, the household, because we're no longer making money. Tourists are moving away from this region. They don't want to sleep here. You remember there's crime, high crime in Umtata. Now, once there's load shedding, it is exacerbated. When there's no, there's load shedding, tags from all over converge and go to those areas that have got businesses like PNPs. They are robbed. They, 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 they break electric fences. They break everything because they know there's two hours of, 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 of no load shedding mm. and nobody's moving at night. It's killing the business. Now, many of the businesses have closed. Uh, people that are employed are being retrenched day in and day out. No one is sleeping in the PNPs, including shops. There is high, high unemployment in this region. Now, this load shedding has added and it is making things very difficult for all the SMMEs in this district. Your personal business, it includes a BNB doctor. Can you estimate what has the latest round of load shedding cost you personally? Personal is over 80,000. The, 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 in fact, we have lost in terms of sales more than 100, 200,000 because no one sleep in my place. No, we, have, we are unable to move. The people are supposed to book, they leave, and they, they will go to areas where there is big generators. In our areas, we've got small generators which we can afford, but other people have got big generators, silent generators. So we have lost more than 150 to 200 in my own specific business because of this. And I'm contemplating retrenching staff I've already retrenched two already. Dr. Nonso, we all know what the problem is. Do we have a solution? Are you engaging with the authorities? What messages are you getting from them? There's nothing we can do because municipality in KSD has got no control of load shedding. Load shedding is a national thing. It is happening at ESCOM. But business people, as they meet and discuss, we all agree that this is a man-made thing. It could be stopped next week if those who are involved in it can be committed. We feel that it is a political issue to send a statement to the current leadership, current leadership to frustrate it. That is why when the president goes overseas, when he comes back, he, he goes there, load shedding goes to eight hours, uh, stage eight. When he comes back, it stops at stage three. If he goes again, it happens again. We were told that coal is sold with glasses and metals and diesel is purported to have been delivered, yet not delivered. We say, according to what we we know this thing that is happening is man-made. We know the board that has got people who have got skills that are not related to the technical needed uh, uh, areas of ESCOM. So we are very concerned. We, what makes these things worse is that we feel this is man-made. Mtata businessman Dr. Andila Nonso. He's lost more than 200,000 rand in potential income since the latest round of load shedding started. Not only that, he's also had his electric fencing cut off by thieves and he now has to spend money fixing damaged equipment in his B&B, including fridges, stoves and other electrical equipment. Like you, doctor, we pray for a speedy solution to the load shedding issue. Thank you for joining us on the Daily Dispatch in discussion today. Thank you very much. Continuing our chat now with small business owners who are buckling under the burden of the latest round of load shedding in South Africa. Owners of the popular Chicken Bar South Africa, a franchise in Mtata, have had to close their doors since mid-September. Ms. Asanda Makabuka from Chicken Bar SA joins us now. It's not a happy story. What happened? 
Uh, yeah, no, definitely far from happy story. Uh, so what what our electricians informed us is that look, as much as there was load shedding, there's also power cuts. So what happened was the electricity came back, um, then it went off again, and then when it eventually when it came back again, uh, there was a blast. So there's a short circuit, and it caused our ovens um, and our extractor to burn. Some a coil burnt. Um, yeah, I don't know the technical term for it, but one of the coils burnt, and obviously now we are you know, caused by the on and off. Yeah, you've had to close doors, a power surge, I'm guessing. Yeah, power surge is 100%. So we closed. Uh, we've been closed for the past two weeks now. Um, it's, I mean, it's it's horrible. Uh, so we had to order parts um, from our suppliers in Johannesburg, and they're waiting. They, they're not sure if they have them. So if they don't have them, they'll have to be ordered overseas, and we don't know how long that's going to be. Oh, dear. So not just are you not earning income, but I imagine there are staff that are affected by this as well. Of course, all our staff members are sitting at home right now. Um, it's month end. <laughs> you know, uh, this is one of our busiest weeks. Um, from the, in fact, from the twenty, from the fifteenth. You know, looking at the entire demographic, from the fifteenth, the store is very busy. Um, and since then, you know, uh, around about the twentieth, we've been closed. So yeah, it's 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 extremely tough. Uh, it's extremely tough. We you, you need to make salaries month end. And you don't know how you're going to do that. Um, and you still need to make repairs. You know? so it's, 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 it's difficult. And yeah. as, like the rest of us, I'm sure you also don't know if there's any end in sight. Is there light at the end of the tunnel, to coin a phrase? Uh, look, um, I think it's obviously we 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 as business owners need to work uh, smart or figure out our own ways because government is not coming to the party. That's for sure. Uh, yes, we do run on gas, but certain things don't run on gas, you know, like your ovens and um these extractors. So maybe, I don't know, look, we we need to think smart and strategically and find ways of how we can still operate our businesses. You know, generators, fuel is expensive, so that's also a double-edged sword. Um, I don't know if there's any of the channel. I mean, our, our government is not going to give us any, I don't see them coming to the party anyway, so that's just a lost cause. So we, we just have to figure it out and find our own life. Can you put a number on what the closure of your business has cost you so far and what it's likely to cost? Uh, I, you know, as a safety thing, uh, Tata, it's been quite a dangerous place for business uh, owners to operate. Um, but look, I mean, we've lost thousands. Um, as I say to you, uh, it's one of our busiest times. Mm. So yeah, it's, it's it's a lot of money. I'll, I mean, the rest of, it's a lot of money. It's, it's thousands. I, I really can't put a figure on it uh, just for safety. Things. And I would imagine you have engaged with the authorities. And again, like us, we don't have any news as to how long we're going to be dealing with this round of load shedding. I remember as far back as 2015, our current president, who, who then was in charge of electricity, told us that within a year or two, load shedding would be a thing of the past. We'd forget that we ever had it. But here we are, seven, eight years later, and the issue is worse than ever. Yeah, look, I mean, the authorities in, in, the, in the district municipality, there's nothing they're going to do for you. So, I, I mean, engaging with them is just a fruitless cause. Uh, I think you'd be uh, going to pillar to post. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it, 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 I mean, there's nothing they can do for mm. you. Mm. <laughs> That's your problem. You need to fix it. You know, your problem becomes our problem because all the other socioeconomic, 100%. all the other socioeconomic ills that that spill from unemployment and businesses closing, uh, they're attendant. So, hundred uh, percent. And and the thing is about the you know the district municipality in Mtata is that what you're also dealing with there's load shedding, but there's also power cuts, which are on a crazy crazy you know pace. So that that's also something that you know. It is, is is a huge issue because as much as there's a schedule, this schedule is also just like does whatever it wants to do. So it's, it's impossible to even plan properly. So you know we tried to raise that issue, but that that fell on deaf ears. So. Well, we, we wish you all the best and we appreciate you joining us to share your story on the Daily Dispatch in discussion today. Asanda, have a good day and all the best to you and Chicken Bar South Africa going forward. Thank you so much. Have a lovely day. That was the Daily Dispatch in discussion with Darren Mann.